Now from West Africa to East Africa, Kenya on Wednesday inaugurated the country's biggest infrastructure project since independence more than 50 years ago. Officials say the standard gauge railway is a morale booster in the country's industrialization and economic transformation. The 480-kilometer China-built standard gauge railway line is built at a cost of 3.8 billion U.S. dollars. The railway is part of China's One Belt, One Road initiative, a multi-billion dollar series of infrastructure projects upgrading land and maritime uh, trade routes between China and Europe, Asia and Africa. Now, the faster speed has reduced a round trip uh, time between Kenya's coastal city of Mombasa and the country's capital uh, city of Nairobi to within a half a day. Present at the starting station of Mombasa were Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta, various cabinet ministers and Chinese President Xi Jinping, special envoy Chinese State Councillor Wang Yong. Well, for more on Kenya's newest train system, VOA's East Africa correspondent Jill Craig joins us live via Skype from Nairobi. Now, Jill, first give us a sense of, you know, what really this means for most Kenyans, at least around, uh, uh, between Mombasa and Nairobi. Well, as you mentioned, Vincent, Kenya hasn't had a new railway in over a century. And the railway that they do have is decrepit. Uh, many people experienced delays or other problems on that train. So that train has never really been a functional, um, actual, uh, realistic form of transport for most Kenyans. As a result, when people are traveling from Nairobi to Mombasa and back, and I'm sure that many of your viewers have taken that, that road, um, the road is, is absolutely infamous for traffic jams and traffic accidents. So so for the normal passenger, the idea of getting from Nairobi to Mombasa or vice versa in half a day, as you mentioned, is quite appealing. And the fact of the matter is, is that a bus ticket costs about $12 each way, whereas a new train ticket is going to cost about $7, the government announced today. So both in terms of timeliness and in terms of cost, I think that most uh, average Kenyans are, are looking forward to this. And of course, you yeah, will also be considering the cost of uh, transporting cargo, but let's focus a little bit on uh, uh, some of the controversial issues that surrounded the, uh, the project. Uh, there were issues of disruption of lives or wildlife and environment. What is the talk of, uh, in town at the moment? Well, there was also, in addition to the wildlife controversy, there was also the controversy of people worried that the Chinese were not going to hire locals to help build this railroad. So those were two of some of the biggest issues surrounding this new infrastructure project. Now, the Chinese decided to um, to hire, they agreed to hire 20,000 Kenyans for this project, including um, laborers, guards, and, sh and cooks. Um, and then in terms of the environmental impact, um, they decided that they would allow for an underpass. They would build an underpass uh, for wildlife to migrate uh, from one side of the railway to the other. It's Sabo, uh, Sabo National Park, which many people are familiar with by uh, the lunatics lions, famous uh, man-eating uh, lions of Sabo. Um, we don't have that anymore, that, to my knowledge. Um, but I will say that that was uh, one concession that the Chinese made. Now, with that said, we still have an issue of Nairobi National Park. So uh, what we inaugurated or launched today was phase one of this railway. The next phase will go from Nairobi um, to the border point with Uganda. And in that phase, it would it's set to go through Nairobi National Park. Um, currently, activists have, um, there, well, there's a court order that is prohibiting building currently um, due to the work of activists. Um, but we don't know uh, what will happen next with that phase. So yes, there has been some controversy with this project. Now, we just mentioned that uh, the president uh, went to commission this uh, railway line. Uh, I would know uh, it's uh, it's an election here. How how kind of timely is this for those uh, who are running for office at this time? Yes, uh, in Kenya, we just kicked off official campaigning uh, just the other day. And so, um, you know, it's interesting because this is very politically based as well. So President Kenyatta is taking a lot of credit for what his administration has done in making sure that this that this project has gone through. Uh, today, he did indeed inaugurate um, the new line. He made stops all the way along. I believe it was six or seven stops he made from Mombasa to Nairobi. And there was definitely a bit of uh, informal campaigning or perhaps formal campaigning 
campaigning that happened at each of those stops. Um, now, with the elections coming up in August, uh, that makes it even more uh, a more important thing to note because the railway was not scheduled to be completed for another 18 months, and it was moved up significantly ahead of schedule uh, in order to make it to today's date, which comes in conveniently about two months before the elections. Now, uh, I should also mention that it's worth pointing out that the opposition candidate for president, Mr. Raila Odinga, um, he has said that when he was prime minister of the unity government here in Kenya, uh, he was also working on this project. But he also makes sure that people know um, when he is campaigning that although big infrastructure projects are important, he says that it's more important to help people with the, the daily issues that they're suffering with, which, you know, currently I'm sure many people are aware of the maize crisis. They're aware of uh, skyrocketing food prices, um, people, youth especially, having trouble finding jobs. Those are the issues that, uh, that Mr. Odinga says that he will be focusing on in the next election with uh, also the mention of the major infrastructure project. Yeah. And very quickly, we mentioned that this is uh, part of the bigger Chinese uh, infrastructure development across the world called the Silk Road. Can you mention just a little bit of uh, where in Africa we've seen similar projects? Sure. Uh, we also had last year the launch of a major railway that went from the port, the Gulf of Aden in Djibouti. Um, that went down to landlocked Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, which was a huge project. Um, that one also, ironically perhaps, was also built about 100 years ago, this time by the French. So, um, so the Chinese have built that railway. We have this railway and we expect more expansion. Definitely. We're watching China in Africa. Thank you very much, Jill, <laughs> for your reporting.